Are you seeing all of me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Hello, hello. Yay. Happy day. Um, I've got my friend Debbie Viola here, um, and we are playing around with mark making, more mark making fun. Um, and so when you're joining, go ahead and let us know that you're here. And I'm Heather Freeman with the Painted Playground, and it's so much more fun painting with friends. Um, I do a lot of painting time in my studio on my own, and I have a great time. But it's always so much fun when we can paint together. And so I thought I would bring my friend Debbie on to do some fun painting together. And we could show you um, what we're doing with um, one of our, one of my favorite mark making tools. We're going to talk about whether you use it or not, but, um, and it's the stencil. And so I um, sent Debbie a little surprise in the mail. And um, she got so excited, she already opened it up, but she knows what it is. But what will you want to show everybody else what it is? It is a, a rose. Yes. Yeah. And I just opened it up last night, so I didn't cheat and do anything with it. Um, <laughs> and roses are my favorite flowers to paint, as you can see. <laughs> I have roses all over the place, so I'm excited to use a stencil. And in my line of work, I'm also a decorative artist. So for 20 years, I've been like climbing ladders, doing finishes on people's walls, and I use a ton of stencils, so this is going to be fun. Yeah, so I was so excited when I found this stencil, and it just had Debbie written all over it. So I had to get this one for you. Oh, thank you. So I'm excited. Um, so yeah, if you haven't checked out Debbie's work, um, where can people find you? Because you do some amazing, you know, you, flowers are definitely something that I think of when I think of you. Um, but you have a lot of amazing things you do. So where could people find out more about oh, what you do? Oh, thank you. Well, um, I guess the best place to, uh, two places. Uh, on social media, it's Art by Debbie Viola. That's my Facebook page, and you could follow me. I go live um, around four nights a week, Sundays, Mondays, where you could win a painting, Wednesdays and Fridays at about 9.30 Eastern time. I say about because, you know, life happens sometimes. So, like, last night I didn't get on until 10.30, and so many more people came on at the later hour. I guess I guess got more of the... Um, west coast people that um i was on until midnight just painting and chatting so i did all these cards we were just hanging out um and my website is debbieviola.com and you can see my art my local decorative painting <laughs> excuse me also there's a section on there that says learn where you could learn about my um painting membership i have a monthly painting club and um, I just remembered, if you go to my website, you could click, like, there's a picture of me, and right onto the picture, there's a little thing that says, grab your free art or grab your art. If you click on that button and just send to your name and email address, I'll send, you'll get a digital download of a painting. It's, it's, I don't have a picture of it, but it's kind of like this. It's, like, very serene. It's like blues and the ocean. Um, it's an abstract. The original is 48 inches by 48 inches, but the digital download is a size that, you know, you could use it as your wallpaper for your phone or any of your devices, and you could also print it and frame it. So that's just my gift to you. Don't worry. I won't bombard you with emails because I don't send any emails out, which I should, but, you know, I'm happy to offer that painting to you if you'd like. <laughs> Awesome. And so we're going to we're going to do some painting together today. So the idea is to we're going to um, you do what you do and have some fun. This is just to start like a little bit of inspiration to get you started. And um, yeah, and let's chat. So, so do you use stencils much in your painting? And I'm going to do my best to um, it's kind of a, for for creatives. It's hard to like talk and create at the same time. But we're going to do our best, right? <laughs> oh, you're using the same stencil, Heather? I'm using the same stencil. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get to see what we each create. Oh, boy. Okay, um, yeah. And I have a stencil, too, to send out. So when you're joining us, go ahead and say hello. Um, let, you, let us know if you're watching us live or watching the replay. Either way, um, when you comment, I'll be able to um, grab your name and enter it into our um, – I've got a little – little jar here full of names and I pick from that um, for our happy mail. And so today's happy mail is this 
really cool oh, rose awesome. stencil. And so we're gonna play around with this today and um, can't wait. Hello, Heather and Debbie. Awesome. Hello, you, you, hello. You know so what, thanks for, yeah. Pick a, pick a second name and I will send out some happy mail to another winner too, okay? I've been making these little okay. uh, these little note cards that are like, you know, a little piece of Gorgeous. art. So you could do it yes. with it and I'll send out one of these to the lucky winner. Oh, so, that's fantastic. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna have two winners of our happy mail today. That's awesome. Yeah. That'll be fun. Okay. So, and feel free as you're watching, if you have questions or comments, go ahead and pop them in the comment area and um, I'm going to be watching and we'll be able to chat live here, all of us together. Yes. And what I'm using is, um, I, I always love a bargain. I found this at Walmart. It's a watercolor paper. It's nine by 12 um, and it's a nice heavyweight, 140 pounds. And what I love about it is that you can um, you could pull out the pages from the spiral, mm -hmm. and then you could just put them right back in. You know, I hate when you have to like rip it out, and then you have all the edges, and then you have to yeah. be careful that you don't ruin the art. But this, like, I have taken this out, and then I put it back in, and it's just great. So anyway, oh, that's, that's cool. yeah, that's what I've been using lately, um, and it doesn't really curl up that much. Yeah. So I thought I, um, oh, I did this lesson inside of my uh, painting club the other night. They wanted some cake art. So I <laughs> painted that. Yeah. Love it. So I thought I'd use this nice big pad today to do something with the rose. That's really cool. I've never seen a pad like that where you can take it out and then put yeah. it Yeah. I just happen to be in Walmart grocery shopping and you know, you can't avoid the craft aisle and there's a craft aisle someplace. So, um, yeah, I was happy to discover it. I want to see if they have all different sizes. This is the only one I and it was like I think it's like seven dollars. It was really inexpensive. That's great, yeah. yeah. It's always good. nice when you can find a good deal. Yeah, that's okay. sorry guys, I'm just trying to get the right angle so that you see the camera. Yeah. And I know sometimes so Sandra people... is watching live from Summerhill PA. Wahoo! Oh, nice. What's the weather there? Because today I looked out the window and I just came in from shoveling. Thank God it was just like only an inch or so dusting. But we, yeah. last week we got hit with like about eight to ten inches and it snowed again on Sunday and now again. So, Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Getting quite a bit. Because you are from New York. Yeah. I live on Long Island. Everybody says on. I don't know why, but I live on Long Island. <laughs> um, not in Long Island, uh, which is the suburbs of New York City. It's about an hour train ride on the railroad from New York City. And we've been living here. Let's see. My son is... Oh my God, my son's going to be 35. My baby's going to be 35 next month. So we're, wow. living, here. we're living here 35 years. And we love it. Now, I my paint of choice is acrylics. I mean, I use everything, but um, it's acrylics. And a lot of people think that I'm using watercolor because somehow I'm able to, like, you know, play and manipulate the paints so that sometimes they look like watercolor, but they're not. Mm -hmm. It's um, it is strictly acrylic. Awesome. Yeah. Acrylics are, are amazing in that it's easy to get into, right, with acrylics. Like, there, you, you can find some oh, yeah. you know, craft brands. Yeah. The, you know, these um, these two-ounce bottles, you know, Folk Art, that's a good brand. Folk Art may be, like, a little bit pricier if you're on a budget. These are probably maybe close to $2 each. Mm -hmm. But you could pick up, like... A, you know, I think my studio is a Michael's brand. Sometimes they're like under a dollar. You could get, I think, Apple Barrel at Walmart for like 50 cents. And, you know, as long as you're not uh, creating work that you want to sell in a gallery, these paints are perfectly fine. Yeah, they're great to play with and not, yeah. let loose mm -hmm. with. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sandra says, uh, where'd it go? She said she was getting snow too. Oh, yeah. Six inches of snow in her driveway today. Oh, lovely. 
That's awesome. I have someone that it's, it's coming up as Facebook user. For some reason, your name's not showing up. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't specifically say your name, but um, she says, I'm, I'm in central PA, oh. more snow overnight. So, yeah. Um, well, Pennsylvania. To, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're supposed to get some. Maybe, maybe tonight. Maybe later this weekend. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, last night on my live, uh, somebody popped in. She was in Nebraska, and I think she said it was the warmest it's been. Was negative three, minus three degrees. I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> Yeah, when it's a wet cold, that's oh, yeah. a little different than where I am. Yeah. It's manageable here in Southwest Colorado because it's so dry. Right, yeah. So it doesn't feel as cold. Uh huh. Holly Adams, she says, oh. that's me, Holly, awesome. Hey, Holly, how are you? I think on StreamYard, do you have to like click on something so that you you'll be able to read their name. I don't know if you have to go to yeah. dot com or something, and it's no big deal. You just like do that, and then yeah. come back. Then Heather can see your name. I think that's how it works. Holly, did you do that? Because now I'm seeing your name. When you just said that's me, Holly, your name now came up. Whereas before it was just saying Facebook user. So let us know what you did. Because I don't. This is a new thing I've been trying out with Streamyard. Learning as I go. Yeah. Yeah, I want to try that too. I've heard good things about that. Yeah. So Debbie, how long have you been creating and painting? Oh my gosh. I first picked up a paintbrush in 1998 when I was 40 years old. And I literally have not put it down since. Um, I always wanted to paint. I went to a Catholic business high school in Brooklyn, New York, and the guidance counselors, they would just like not let me take art as an elective. I was so mad. They made me take like, you know, business math and algebra. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, and my mom says, I cried my eyes out one day in kindergarten because I was sick and I didn't want to miss finger painting. So I guess I've been a suppressed artist all those years. And in 1998, we put a new bathroom in our house. And I said to my husband, you know, these shows on HGTV, they're all coming out and they do like fancy stuff with like a rag or a sponge. I want to do something. And he was like, huh? like, I promise if it doesn't come out good, I'll paint it back, I swear. And he's like, all right. So I took my beige tile and I went to Home Depot down the aisles and I bought like four different shades of beige and then I saw something that was cheesecloth and a sea sponge. I had no idea what any of this was. So like, okay, this looks right. And something called translucent glaze. So I came home and I started playing and it really, it came out gorgeous. I shocked myself and anybody that knew me that saw it, but the contractors were like, you got to quit your day job. You're better than any professional we've ever seen. And I'm like, get out of here. This is the first thing I've done. They were like, they couldn't believe it. So that just like sparked this whole renewed interest in, you know, being creative. I mean, I had taught myself how to sew. When we first got married, my husband bought me a sewing machine. I didn't even know what a bobbin was. <laughs> so I went to the library because back then there was no Google and got books on sewing. And I taught myself to the point where I made bridal party gowns and I even made a wedding gown. Um, but I just never had the opportunity to um, paint. But suddenly, like I fell in love with it and I just wanted to learn everything that I could. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the local Michaels had like learned how to paint on glass. So I went and took that class. And then, you know, then I was obsessed with painting on glass. So I would take all my creations because now I had like, you know, a big pile of glassware. And I went to a local craft fair and the table was like, you know, 50 bucks. And if I made $60, I was like, oh, my God, I'm making money. This is awesome. You know, sitting there two days to make $10, like, yes, uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but um, I certainly had no intention to quit my day job. I mean, I was running a million attorney law firm in the city. I hated it. By the time I left in 2001, I was there 23 years. My boss was an insane workaholic maniac. Um, 
but it was all I knew how to do. And it was, you know, helping put food on our table. And my daughter was going to a private college that was more than a mortgage. So, you know, I had to work. So this was just like, you know, um, an outlet, like creativity, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I had gone to another craft fair and by now I had pictures of my bathroom and my sister-in-law asked me to do a room in her house. And then her friend asked me to do a room. So now I had this little mini album with like, you know, the three pictures, the three rooms I had done. So I had that at the craft fair along with pictures of my glassware and all my glassware. So this lady took my card and she's like, my, my neighbor's renovating her house. I'm going to give her your card. I'm like, okay. And I didn't hear anything from her, like, for months. Um, then I went about my life, and this is what I was doing, you know, painting for fun, and then I'm trying to make a few bucks on the weekend, you know, that was my stress relief. Yeah. Because um, I commuted over three hours a day. It was an hour and a half each way. A lot of times I would get in, my kids were already sleeping, because um, my boss would make me stay till, like, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. It was miserable. But... Um, and then, so now fast forward to September 11th, 2001, and um, I saw everything live out my window. I was about two miles away. Uh -huh. The World Trade Center, that's considered downtown New York. I was in Midtown, and my daughter was a freshman in college uptown, like about three miles further uptown, north of me. And anyway, it was just... You know, I can only describe it to this day. I still feel like I lived through, like I was part of a, a horror movie. You know, like just a surreal horror movie that I kept wanting to wake up from. But anyway, um, the impetus to leave my job was after we saw the buildings come down and my boss is screaming, oh my God, I think Jared is in danger, but one of his colleagues was in it at a meeting. Thankfully he wasn't, but we saw the buildings coming down. We knew people were still trapped inside. And as I'm leaving, I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I have to go be with my daughter. And I was gonna walk uptown. The, uh, I walked like, I think over a hundred blocks to be with her. Thank God my days of high heels were over. I had sneakers on. <laughs> So all I was thinking in my mind was all I need is contact lens solution. I'm sure somebody at the college has that for me. That, that was the, my only like logical thought. Um, so as I'm walking to the elevator, my boss follows me with work. Since you're leaving early today, could you do this at the dorm? Like, I think, like nothing else just happened like he didn't think his friend was killed we didn't see what we saw just you know could you do this work and i walked in the elevator my jaw dropped and i'm like i'm done i am done um i didn't know what i was gonna do i didn't know how i was gonna do it but i'm like a practical responsible person so i forced myself to stay until christmas so i would get my last little and I mean, little Christmas bonus, but it was still, you know, better than nothing. Um, I had to think of a family first. And right after that, I put in my notice. And still, like, I didn't spend those months crafting out a business plan. You know, that would have been smart. I'm not a business person. I was an employee all my life. All I knew was I've got to get out of here, and I don't want to work for anybody but myself ever again. And here I am all these years later still blessed that I was able to do that. You know, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Certainly not easy when you're in business for yourself, Heather. You know that too. Um, but I don't think I would trade it for anything. I get to do what I do and, you know, make people happy, whether it's, you know, them hugging me after I do their room, that now they have this beautiful oasis, they could just sit in and relax, whether I transform their cabinets or their fireplace, whatever. Um, and then once I started teaching, that brings me like even more joy, you know, because now I could share my love of painting with other people and teach them. And what I've been doing since the pandemic was um, 
I didn't want to come out of the pandemic, which I thought the lockdown was going to be about two weeks back last March, right? Meanwhile, we're still in lockdown. I only go grocery shopping. That's it. Um, I wanted to feel like I was accomplishing something for myself at the end of those, you know, two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I just, I want to paint more. You know, it's like the shoemaker who has holes in his shoes. You never get to do anything for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then, like, one thing led to the other and I didn't paint that night and I was getting annoyed. And then the next night I didn't paint because of something. We also have our 94 and 98 year old moms living with us. So it's kind of worse than having two three year olds with you. Anyway, um, so my life pretty much is not my own right now. But um, then I said, you know how I could hold myself accountable? I'm gonna go live on my Facebook page. Cause then I have no choice. Once I start saying I'm going live every night, that's it, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I started doing. I'm, I'm pretty much a night owl. I have trouble sleeping. And especially, at, I mean, still now, but especially at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, I think everybody's anxiety was running high. And um, so I started going on like at midnight or one in the morning. And I found the later I went on, the more people were hopping on. And a lot of them were creative people. Mm -hmm. Like other artists from all over the country. That's how I've met some people that I consider my friends now. It's so crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and one night, I was just tossing and turning and fighting it. My husband's like, you know, just just go to sleep. Why can't you just lay down and go to sleep? Because <laughs> that's what he could do, you know. His head hits the pillow when he's snoring. And I'm like, you don't understand. If that's not how your brain is wired, I just can't make it happen. I try. I put my headset on. I put some music. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And you know how frustrating it is to toss and turn for hours when you're thinking, oh, God, I could be painting now. So one night I got out of bed. It was, I think, 3.30 in the morning. And I came down and I went live. And like in five minutes, there were like 30 people on. I couldn't believe that there were interior designers. There were artists. And then people started thanking me and sending me messages. Because I started... Um, it was a little too quiet, so I put on soft music. I know somebody locally that she's a beautiful classic piano player and music composer. So I asked her if I could do some music, and of course she's thrilled because I mention her name every time. So I just started like putting the soft music and hanging out painting, and people started sending me messages like, oh my God, your voice is so calming. You remind me of a female Bob Ross. Thank you for keeping my anxiety down during the lockdown. It's I'm still to this day getting the same kind of messages and I'm like, I'm humbled by it, but I laugh every time because now I get messages, you put me to sleep. When I want to go to sleep, I put you on at night. I have you on my calendar. I tell my husband I have to go watch that lady. I'm like, oh my God, how could I bottle this up and monetize it? <laughs> uh -huh. But um, it's just like has become a thing. And I was creating a painting a night, so I have a stack of like over 200 paintings. Mm -hmm. And then I cut it back a little. Now I just have it four, four nights a week. And I have Monday Madness where whoever comes on and just like chats, a random commenter is selected. And I, I announce that winner on Wednesday night. So they come back to like Wild Wednesday where I paint again. Then I give away a painting and put it in the mail. You know, it's kind of fun. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's my story. <laughs> <laughs> that's an amazing story. Love it. Yeah. Oh, oh. Talk about amazing. I still pinch myself. It's crazy. Um, I feel like we lost this whole year, which we did. So I guess it was 2000, 2019. In about May, I get a call from a New York publisher. Not like a big, like, Random House publisher, but a, a woman, a New York publisher, calls me, and she's like, um, I have been following you for years. I've followed your story, and I want you to write a book for us. And I'm like, hello? This is Debbie Viola. Do you have the right person? <laughs> and she's yes, like, they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you're exactly who I want to speak to. Absolutely. And I'm like, why me? I don't understand. And she's like, are you kidding? The fact that you followed the passion and managed to figure out how to turn a hobby 
into a business and here you are like almost 20 years later still doing what you love and inspiring women i'm like really and so i started writing a book they gave me guidelines you know it's not like i got a book deal where they commissioned me and gave me money right now it's just like i'm writing a book that they think is going to sell so they're figuring it's going to sell we're going to make money let's do it you know they didn't like give me an advance or anything that's for sure not a penny so um to like just tell your story of how you got started and then we also want it to be like a coffee table book so we want it to be your artwork and pictures of your finishes and different sections like cabinets and fireplaces and maybe a chapter on stripes and at the beginning of each chapter do like a little very minimal like instruction so it also appeals to like diyers you mm -hmm. know and then they could get in touch with you for more instruction or whatever so that's what i did and you know um, we were at the point where it was out of my hands i gave it to them we worked on a cover and a name the, the working title was art and decorative painting for the home and then we were planning a big um what do you call it book launch at, mm -hmm. a, at a barnes and noble in new york city and then the pandemic happened <laughs> and here we are but hopefully that'll still happen. Yeah. yeah. It's gotta happen. Yeah, yeah. Something to look forward to. So I am absolutely, you know, blessed. And it's, and I tell everybody, you know what? It's never too late. You know, I didn't pick up a paintbrush until I was 40. And I managed somehow to, like, turn it into, what what is it called? It's like a vocation. I don't even consider it, like, a job. Like, even when I'm... You know, lugging paints in and out of my car. Well, now maybe I did in the winter. And climbing ladders. Like, I don't consider it work. You know, it's mm -hmm. physical and it's hard, but I love doing it. It's like creating, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. When you're doing what you love, yeah. it's, not, it's not work. Definitely. That's my words of wisdom. It's never too late. Because you just so it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's just so amazing to me. You started out with painting a wall in your home. Yeah. <laughs> and just how it kind of snowballed from there. Mm -hmm. Your intention was really just to bring some beauty into your home and right. um, create something for yourself. And and now you're getting to share it with the world. That's pretty, that, that's really awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, never, ever in my wild dreams. If you would have asked me then, would I have seen any of this? Was any of this part of my motivation or plan? Like, I was happy making $10 at a craft fair. No, I didn't plan on this happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it speaks a lot to what is possible for people that are watching, right? Like, you don't totally. have to start painting with the intention of selling your art. Right. Um, <clears throat> that can, can be part of your path or not. Um, but when you're just starting out, Painting just to paint and just to have fun and just to bring some beauty into your world, whether it's yeah. like doing a small, you know, what I'm working on is like, I think a nine by 12, and, you know, similar to what you're working on and just to, to enjoy the process and then have a little something to put up on your refrigerator when you're done so that you can enjoy it and have a little spark of color in your world. That is plenty, right? We don't have to go beyond that. Oh, absolutely. There's so yeah. much value to that. I was once asked to do a paint party, you know, the like seven paint parties. I've been doing them since I think 2002 was my first paint party. So I've been doing them almost 20 years before they were, you know, known like they are today. Mm -hmm. But it was for a woman's um, 50th birthday. She was throwing herself a party and she thought it would be fun to have her friends over and some of her family and have like a paint party. Yeah. Um, so I got wooden trays and they all painted wooden trays. Her aunt was there, 84 years old. It was the first time in her life she held a paintbrush and she loved it. At 84 years old, she had never painted before. Wow. So that was like so much fun. She's never ever known. Yeah, and you're never too old for it. Like, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can start whenever. 
just do it, right? There's something to that Nike thing. Yeah, for sure. So um, Sandra says beautiful colors. She's loving the colors. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I just had like some pastel colors and I made them like I made the brush very wet and watery. And as you can see, there's like it's a little drippy. When I'm done, I'll hold it up close. I'm thinking spring, right? I'm so tired of this. Even though we've been lucky here. I mean, normally I have a winter coat on like in October sometime, but definitely November. I really didn't need a winter coat until just a few weeks ago, like right before the first snowstorm and started getting cold like a day or two before that. But other than that, I was just like walking around with a long uh, zippered hoodie and gloves and, and it was beautiful. Then, then I got hit. And now the memories are coming up on our phones because we usually go away around this time of the year to break up the winter a little bit. And my husband's yeah. like, oh. we were in Mexico this time three years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, one hint, when I do stencil on a wall, on walls, mm -hmm. they have something called, um, what is it called? Kry Krillin or Krylon is the brand, K-R-Y-L-O-N. Okay. And it's a spray, it's removable. So I would spray it on the back of the stencil and then let it, then it, let it set up for a few minutes and it feels a little tacky. But then you could put the stencil on the wall and it holds like tight to the wall or whatever mm -hmm. the surface is. And then you stencil and then like you gently remove it and it doesn't damage the wall and then you move mm -hmm. it. Because I do like big like, you know, repeat patterns all over the wall of like a damaged stencil or something. Yeah. And it's, it's just impossible to hold this like, you know, three foot stencil up and, you know, even if you tape it, it gets loose. So the, um, you know, the adhesive is excellent. That's a great tip. Yeah. So Heather, how long have you been painting? Um, I first picked up a paintbrush when I was, I don't know, seven or eight. Oh, cool. And I loved painting on wood. Um, I remember my dad and I, we found this shop when we were vacationing at the beach and um, just full of, of wood, like the different shapes and things. Uh -huh. And I found these little wooden tulips uh -huh. that I just love to paint. And oh, um, and yeah, and but I didn't, I just kind of did it for fun, you know. That age. I was just doing it for fun. I just loved painting. Um, right. And then, you know, kind of grew up and did all the adult things, yeah. took on all the adult responsibilities yeah, kind of, yeah. and kind of left. You know, I think I was always doing creative things, but right. kind of stopped painting for sure. Uh -huh. And then um, when my kids were, Bailey was probably about, I think she was about five. So Zoe was three and we needed something to do one day. I was exhausted as a mom. Like I was just wiped out. Um, I love being a mom. I've always loved being a mom, but I just, I was, and I decided, you know, my husband and I decided that I would be a stay at home. I really wanted to be home with the kids, but that's like a 24 seven. Like there's oh, yeah. aren't any breaks. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I was just exhausted. So I had pulled out some, just some scraps of paper and some paint, some finger paints, you know, just the kid stuff, right? watercolors and that kind of stuff, and just threw them on the table. I'm like, all right, let's just do something. I don't know. I don't have any plan. Right, right. <laughs> let's just see what happens. And uh, my girls just totally dove in. Zoe was in diapers. It was really cute. And she ended up with paint all over herself. <laughs> like, just did a ton of finger painting and got all into it and had a great time. 
And Bailey, she picked up some paper and scissors and started creating this paper sculpture. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, you know, when your mom, like, sometimes you wear Google eyes and you're just like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be the next Picasso <laughs> or Matisse. Um, uh, so, yeah, I just I was just amazed at, like, how much fun they were having and uh, and here I was like feeling so exhausted and just right. completely depleted. I was like, uh -huh. I want some of that juju. Like that's some really good, <laughs> like they were just having so much fun. Right, right. So I was like, well, why am I just sitting here? And so then I started painting along and playing along with them and oh, it kind of grew from there. Um, really it was, it was for me and just to have a creative outlet. Right, right. Um, was, was fantastic and then as the kids grew up um i kind of carried that into what i was doing with them and uh -huh. actually started a, a girls club oh brought their friends in and um then it, you know grew to people in the community other girls in the community would come and hang out with us and do a little art camp and uh -huh. use art for really kind of thinking about who they are and uh -huh. Um, we talked about all kinds of things like around friendship and the things that you love and uh -huh. used art as a tool for, for expressing those things. Right. 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 And, uh, and then I started, you know, I had moms that were like, well, what about me? Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to have this much fun too. And so then I really branched out and started doing, painting classes and paint parties for, for women. For, oh, um, uh -huh. yeah. So yeah, for me too, it was this, this evolution of kind of doing it as something for myself. Right. To really refuel and kind of get back to, you know, being more present. Like I just realized like when I, after I created, I just felt so good <laughs> that I wanted to create more and, yeah, it just made, it allowed me to be more present for my girls and my husband, and so I just found really good value in taking that time to create and have fun and play. Yeah, it's so true. You just get so lost in what you're doing that all the stress, you know, just kind of like lifts for a while. Yeah, and you need. Yeah. Yep, you can just get lost in it all. Yeah. Especially these days, who doesn't need to get away from politics and pandemic and, you know. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Ah, Nancy Gray's in the house. She says, hi, Heather and Debbie. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Martha. How's it been? Sandra says, I smooth flat canvas panels over my pictures to absorb the extra paint like Heather is using the paper. Yeah, yeah. It's a great way to like, for me, I get a little impatient. I don't know about you, Debbie, but I like the play so much that I can't wait for paint to dry. Right, right. And, and so, um, so I either get out a heat gun or I will sometimes do a print, which will just um, kind of flatten the paint out a little bit. It, for me, I love it because it, I love texture and I love things looking wonky and yeah. I love the imperfections of things. So um, when I just smush it down, like I'll take a piece of paper and just gently press down and pull it up. Um, it allows that to dry a little quicker. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I get a print on here. So if I was to do this on a canvas, that would work as well and kind of be a start for another canvas. Oh, that's uh, a great idea, yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. For when I do the, on paper, um, Sandra, this great this could become some great collage paper. So I could keep painting over this, play with this some more, cut it up, and use it as a collage piece. So I'm all about too, like recycling and continuing to play with the things that I make. Other people might think, oh, this is just a piece of junk and just throw it in the trash. But for me, I love like no. <laughs> being kind of thinking outside the box and thinking about, okay, how else can I use this? How how much farther can I take it, and what can I do with it? So yeah, yeah. So using it on a canvas too is a great, great way. Yeah, there's, there's no such thing as junk when you're a creative, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love, I love it, I love it, Debbie. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. 
So you're continuing to use a little bit of that water cut, you know, water down. Yeah. As yeah. a watercolor. Mm -hmm. So you still see a little bit of the marks on here. I have yeah. one, one more section and then I'll fold it off. Yeah, the other day my husband was throwing out my mother-in-law's, um, did you call it a strainer? Like the plastic mat that lies in the sink. So when you put your dishes in the sink, you don't like chips or porcelain. Yeah. But anyway, it was all, so he was throwing it out. And I took it out of the garbage and I cut a piece off of it because it was just like squares, like little, little squares. And I'm like, I could probably use this for something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many piles of like boxes of stuff like that. Uh -huh. It drives my husband a little crazy, but um, I know like when you're creative, like you just see the potential in so many things <laughs> um, and it can be some really weird things. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't always make sense to everybody else, but to us, we're like, yeah, uh -huh. see how I can use that. <laughs> you know what, you know what I say too? I'm looking for a good one. This may sound a little sick, but the the paint inside of the bottles, like eventually it hardens. Yeah. And it becomes like a little hard piece, kind of like plastic. And I started out just like, you know, after a while you have to like pull it off so the hole where the paint comes out of doesn't get too small and close yep. up. And I pulled them out. And then one day I was just doing like a lot of them. And I just like threw them off to the side and I'm like, I bet you I could do something with them. I don't know what, but I started saving them. And one day my granddaughter, she's nine now, but she and she's very creative. She paints, she does clay, sculpting and everything. So great. And she's like, Grandma, don't you find that strangely satisfying? <laughs> and I'm like, Juliana, you do that too? And she said, yeah. So then I started saving it. But now she thinks I'm crazy because now I have a stash of this big bag. I don't know what I'm doing with it yet. And what I also started doing... I can't reach it. Um, my palettes, you know, the paints on the palette would dry up. And, you know, it would get like this piece right here. You know, it just yes. Goes, and it's laying there. I'm like, all right, I'm probably going to add it to my uh, bag of whatever you call them. I don't know. Yes, I have those too. And I have the, the ones from the top of the paint <laughs> as well. And you know what I was thinking of doing? And maybe we can try this together of putting them on, um, um, like mounting them and making them into a stamp. Maybe oh. see what happens. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I love that you're, yeah. We are made from the same cloth, I think, because <laughs> I do that too. It is so funny. Oh, that's kind of cute. So here's mine so far. Maybe I'll add to it. Yay! Yeah, I love how the colors blend, and it really does look like a watercolor. Uh huh. In the background, and then yeah, you got the pops with the of color really? with the. Uh huh. I had bought um for my granddaughter this. I guess like a little knapsack. Again, yeah. the, the craft aisle and Walmart. And I says, oh, I'm going to paint it. I'm going to do something with this. And of course I haven't, but maybe I'll try to do something for Valentine's Day because I bought her some paints and crafty stuff. Oh, maybe you. I'll, yeah, maybe I'll do something like this on it. Yeah. I wonder. You know what? Maybe I'll do the flower part now. I'll do it in reverse. I'll do a few flowers or a flower on the knapsack and see what happens. I'll put this here so you could see this. Yeah, and this paper it doesn't really curl up a lot, like just a little. So when we're done, I'll just like lay this flat and you know maybe turn it upside down so it dries flat. But you know, I get very very little. Yeah, that's great. Oh, geez. 
and even doing it on these little cards, you know, it's yeah. just, they're just like curled up, you know, just a little, but not bad. And these, are, these, these aren't even watercolor cards. I ran into Michael's because I had time to kill one day before I had to pick my husband up. Um, and they had a package of these cards. I think it was like 15 or 20 cards and they were on sale. I think like $2. They even had these um, scalloped ones. Yeah, I think that's it might be the same sale that Sandra was telling me about. She was she had texted me earlier last week and yeah. Oh, okay, maybe sounds great. These are so cute. I love it with the scalloped edge. Yeah, right. Pretty. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's the, the same kind of background, and then I painted over it. It's just lots of fun. Awesome. More fun art. <laughs> so I kind of stamped my flower on. I think that looks oh. look really bright. Can you see that? Yeah, it's bright. I do that. Yeah, that's better. Better? Yeah. Anyway, that angle. I think I'm going to go ahead and outline it and keep working it. Oh, that's a good idea to outline it. Yeah. Okay. But um, why, don't we, um, why don't we share our finished pieces? We'll do it in our, in our group. Want to do that? Yes. And then we'll announce. So Debbie offered to... I've got some happy mail. I'm going to send out... Um, a stencil to someone today and you know I've been saying later today like but I feel like I want to there's so many people that watch this as a replay that I want to give people a chance to watch it so I think I'm going to switch from announcing the recipient today which um, I wasn't always good about doing <laughs> but I, sometimes it would be the next day but um, I think I'm going to do it the next I'm going to do it tomorrow so tomorrow's Friday so I will go in and tomorrow to allow those people that love to watch the replays because I know not everybody can watch it live. A lot of people enjoy watching it on their own time when it's good for them. So I will. Um, so just make sure to pop your name in the comments um, and let me know if you're you know watching it live or replay. And then I will add your name to our jar. And I'm going to give away one of the stencils that we use today. So the rose. And then Debbie is offered to, um, we can pick another person to win a piece of her art on one of her note cards that she painted these beautiful flowers on. Yes, yes. I will yes. be happy to give away and maybe a little, little surprise inside as well. I don't have to think it's something. So yeah, so that's exciting. I'd love to do that. Great. So before we go, if you were, you know, I know we have a lot of people that, um, that really want to get painting and want to get you know more creative. Um, what would you say is your number one tip for getting started? Don't be afraid. Like just do it. Um, and now I think because of the pandemic, now I see Target has a craft and a paint aisle. The Dollar Tree has a big section. So. When I first started, locally, there weren't any classes around. When I did find a painting class and I took the class, the teacher sent a supply list. It cost me like over $100 worth of paints and brushes mm -hmm. and stuff. And it's like, oh, my God, that's, you know, I don't want it to be cost prohib prohibitive. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be. So I tell people, just like go to Walmart. There's a store by me called Five Below, and mm -hmm. everything is $5 or less. And the other day for two dollars, I picked up a little watercolor kit. Complete. It was like six six colors of watercolor, a paintbrush, six pieces of watercolor paper, and I think ten watercolor pencils. It was like crazy. So I picked up two of them. So for like five dollars, I swear you could get started. You yeah. know, you just need white, a few basic colors, mm -hmm. and um, paper. You don't want to go out and buy any surfaces. You could use a cardboard box. You could use a cereal mm -hmm. box and paint it. I mean, just do it. Don't put pressure on yourself. Don't feel like I have to make a flower and if it doesn't make a flower, you're going to get hard on yourself. Just like, look, even just doing the background, right? Right? Or what Heather's doing, there's no right or wrong. And it's just so much fun and you're going to feel so much better. And, you know, my students, I used to have students that came to my house. And they would joke and like, oh my God, there's so much cheaper than therapy. And we would all laugh, laugh at it. But now there's scientific proof to back it up. Your cortisol yeah. levels go down. I mean, it's just so beneficial for your stress level. Because mm -hmm. 
when I come down at the end of the day, after 10 minutes, just, you know, I forget about all the nonsense going on in my house with my mom and my mother-in-law. And, you know, it's just like, ah, oh, just breathe and paint and create and, like, your troubles melt away. Even if it's just for that moment. And then you come away from it and, you know, it's kind of like getting a massage or I'm not into manicures because I always have pain. But, you know, why do people go for manicures every week? Because it makes them, yeah, it looks pretty, but it also makes you feel good, right? Well, yeah. being creative makes you feel good, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I love spending time with you and the time that we get to create together is just fantastic. So yeah, this was so much fun, Heather. Thank you. Yeah. You Nancy says fun. I love making and giving away cards. Um, Holly says, I love that so many of you are sharing your talent with us. I just started stenciling this year and I hadn't painted anything freehand until I watched Debbie. Oh, so both awesome inspirations. Oh, uh, thank thanks, you. Holly. Thanks yeah. yeah, that's great. All right. Well, everybody have a great day. Um, and we'll see you if you'd like to um, know who's the, the recipient of our happy meal. Um, pop into our Facebook group um, tomorrow and uh, we'll share that with you. And yeah, keep painting. Get out there and just start, right? Just do it. Yes. And you never know. <laughs> you never know where it's going to take you. That's for sure. That's awesome. awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Thanks, Debbie. We'll see you later. Have a great day. I'll take care of you too. Bye, guys. Right. Bye, everybody.